In this demo, I would like to illustrate what it takes to build a chip using HDL and to test it on our hardware simulator. To get started, I go to my file system and to project number one. And let us assume that we want to work on the XOR chip. So I look it up and uh, here it is. Double click it. And on my computer, when I double click a file which has an HDL extension, it opens this particular text editor. On your computer, it may be another text editor of your choice. It doesn't really matter. As you see, I already built part of the implementation. And now I want to complete the last missing statement. So I think it should be an OR in which the first operand should be the output of this chip. So let me copy paste it. The second operand should be the output of the second end. Copy paste. And then the output of this chip should be the output of, of the overall chip. So out equals out. Let me save that and try to load it into my simulator. So I go to the load uh, icon and uh, once again I look for project one and here's the, uh, the file that I worked on. I load it. Well, the load uh, failed with an error message saying uh, missing semicolon in line 22. So let me go back to the editor. And indeed, there is a missing semi semicolon here. So I will insert the semicolon, save the file again, go back to the simulator, and reload the edited file. So reload XOR. And this time, we managed to load the file correctly. So let's try to play with the inputs of this uh, chip as we did in the previous demo. So I'm going to my A input and changing it to, let's say, 1. And I would like to evaluate the chip. So I go to this icon here. But the icon is dimmed and it does not respond to my clicks. I'm trying to click and nothing happens. So obviously we have a problem here. And indeed we do have a problem, which happens because of a subtle issue that I would like to share with you. Take a look at the XOR.HDL program, which is loaded into the simulator, and notice that it uses five chip parts, and altogether it uses three generic chips, not AND and OR. Now the problem is that I have not yet implemented any one of these chips. These chips exist as the empty stub files that we gave you as part of project one. For example, take a look at not.hdl. Obviously, it's not yet implemented. So what can we do to solve this problem? Well, basically, there are two possible strategies. One of them is to work on these chips in the order in which they are presented in our lectures. If you will do this, you will always implement the more basic chips first, and therefore you will not run into this problem. The other strategy is to force the simulator to use the built-in versions of NOT, AND, and OR. And you can do this by simply renaming these three chips in the current directory. So we can change the name of NOT HDL to, let's say, NOT HDL1. And uh, we also have an end chip part that we have to neutralize. So let's rename this one to end.hdl1. And uh, we also have an OR chip somewhere here. We'll rename it to be OR HDL1. And now these chips have been renamed. So I go back to my simulator and I reload the XOR chip once again. 
let's reload the XOR chip. And it looks like nothing happened, but uh, actually, I think that now we'll be able to evaluate this chip. So just to prove it, let me go to my A input and change it, let's say, to 1. And now, lo and behold, I see that the eval button is actually activated. And if I evaluate it, I see that the chip responds with uh, an output of 1. So here is what happened here. Once I renamed my chip parts, they no longer qualify as regular HDL files. So the simulator tries to evaluate the chip parts not AND and OR, but it doesn't find HDL files with these names in the current directory. Now, failing to find these chips in the current directory, the simulator resorts to invoking the built-in implementations of the missing chips. Why does it behave this way? Because that's how we designed our hardware simulator. And because built-in chips are always guaranteed to work according to the specification, the simulation of any chip that depends on them is guaranteed to work as well, provided, of course, that your HDL code is correct. So, in this demo, we learned two things. First of all, how to load and play with a chip that you have built using some external text editor. And we also learned how to force the simulator to use built-in chip parts when the need arises.